Chapter 711, You Will Not Die If You Don't Seek Death, 1. After returning into the monarch city, Yi Kington brought the little white tiger straight to Falling Sky Valley. She had the Millennium Meteoric Iron in her hands and was acquainted with Master Du now. It seemed that there should not be any problem to enter Falling Sky Valley. But just as Yi Kington just left the street of the monarch city, a few figures suddenly followed behind her. Senior Brother Chu, does that fellow really have Millennium Meteoric Iron? A youth in the Tangang sect uniform asked Chu Yi as he fixed his eyes on Yi Kington not far away. Chu Yi laughed coldly and nodded while looking at Yi Kington. In the Bliss Forging workshop earlier on, he already knew that this pretty young man possessed the Millennium Meteoric Iron. The Millennium Meteoric Iron was extremely precious, and he would obviously not let it go easily. Furthermore, Chu Yi narrowed his eyes slightly. This fellow caused him to embarrass himself in front of Master Du just now and ruined his meteoric iron sword. How would he let him off so easily? He should have quite an amount of Millennium Meteoric Iron. You will go there with me later and steal his Millennium Meteoric Iron, Chu Yi said. After leaving the Bliss Forging workshop, he immediately found a junior brother from the same master in the Monarch City and both of them came over together this time with the intention of robbing the fat sheep before them. But looking at the path he is taking, it seems that he is heading towards Falling Sky Valley. Could she be a Falling Sky Valley disciple? That youth said hesitantly. Falling Sky Valley and their Tangang sect were comparable in skills, though their relations had always been far from good. They were currently in Falling Sky Valley's boundary. If that young man was a Falling Sky Valley disciple and others in the Falling Sky Valley discovered them, they would not gain any benefit with just two of them. You're worrying too much. He is not a Falling Sky Valley disciple and is merely an ordinary itinerant. Why are you nagging so much? If we let him run away, we will never have a chance to obtain Millennium Meteoric Iron in our lives. You must know that if we can wield a weapon made from Millennium Meteoric Iron, it would be extremely grand and impressive, Chu Yi said impatiently. Upon hearing the words Millennium Meteoric Iron, the youth had a thought in his mind as well. The two of them nodded immediately. They were both at the first heaven of Martial Chi level 3 currently. Apart from the disciples of large forces, in the entire Nine Knights dynasty, an ordinary itinerant could not be their opponent. As Yi Kington headed towards Falling Sky Valley, she suddenly sensed two unusual auras behind her. She stopped and turned around. In the next instant, Chu Yi and the tooth immediately appeared in Yi Kington's line of sight. When Yi Kington saw Chu Yi, her brows raised automatically. Fook, could it be that this bastard saw through my identity and are after us? The little white tiger asked quietly when it saw Chu Yi once again. Yi Kington looked at the delusional little white tiger speechlessly. It was really thinking too much. Chu Yi had never looked at it properly from the start to the end. All right, we meet again. Chu Yi looked at Yi Kington, who stopped in her tracks, without bothering that his actions were discovered. What business do you two have? Yi Kington asked with a poker face. Chu Yi laughed. Little brother. You ruined my sword in the Bliss Forging Workshop just now. You couldn't have forgotten about this score, could you? Chapter 712, You Will Not Die If You Don't Seek Death, 2. That sword was bestowed to me personally by my master and has a special meaning to me, yet you ruined it like that. It would be inappropriate if you don't give me corresponding compensation. Wouldn't it? Yi Kington looked at Chu Yi without emotion. She never thought that this Tangang sect disciple would actually be so shameless. Before the sparring, they had already agreed that no one would be responsible regardless of whose sword was broken. Yet this Chu Yi actually came looking for trouble. Yi Kington was not a fool. When she heard Chu Yi mentioning compensation, she knew that he had taken a fancy on her Millennium Meteoric Iron. Oh, so how do you want me to compensate? Yi Kington said flatly. Chu Yi and the youth beside him exchanged a look, deeply satisfied with Yi Kington's amenable attitude. I'm not asking for much. As long as you give me all the Millennium Meteoric Iron in your hands, this matter can be considered to be over. Chu Yi spoke relatively generously as though his demand had given Yi Kington a lot of face. However, in Yi Kington's ears, this was unbelievably ridiculous. What if I don't compensate? Chu Yi's eyes sharpened. If you don't compensate me, don't blame us for being hard on you then. Then, Chu Yi shot a look at the youth, who immediately unsheathed his sword, 
putting on a clear threatening stance. I'll give you two options. First, hand over the Millennium Meteoric Iron, and we will be compassionate enough to spare your life. Second, we will kill you and then take the Millennium Meteoric Iron. Live or die, you decide for yourself. Yi Kington looked at the two domineering people before her, and her lips curled into a seeming smile. I choose the third option. Yi Kington's eyes turned cold immediately. I want the Millennium Meteoric Iron and your lives. How cocky. Chu Yi scoffed coldly. Junior brother, there's no need to go easy on her. Since she is so confident, there's no need for us to say any more bullshit to her. Chu Yi and that youth immediately wielded their swords and charged towards Yi Kington. Yi Kington stood rooted to the ground as she swept a nonchalant look across the two figures dashing towards her. Come at me, reckless people. The little white tiger immediately opened its mouth as it watched the two people charging towards them, wanting to spit all over their faces. However, Yi Kington lifted her hand and stopped the little white tiger. There's no need. In the blink of an eye, Chu Yi and his junior brother were already right in front of Yi Kington, and two swords stabbed right towards her chest. A glint flashed across Yi Kington's eyes, and she suddenly raised her hands. Glang. Two clear sounds rang in the air all of a sudden. Yi Kington used two fingers from each hand to clasp the two extremely sharp blades effortlessly freezing the two knives in midair. What Chu Yi was stunned as he looked at Yi Kington in disbelief. How could it be? Yi Kington's eyes flickered, and her smile deepened. It's my turn. The moment she spoke, an overbearing aura suddenly exploded from Yi Kington, surging directly towards Chu Yi and his junior brother like an enormous wave. At the same time, their swords crackled and broke into countless broken shards. Chapter 713. You will not die if you don't seek death. 3. Puff, puff. Yi Kington's shocking aura crashed directly on Chu Yi and his junior brother, and they were hurled several meters away. Both of them fell on the ground heavily and puked blood. Half, half step Yin Yang perfected Lord Chu Yi crawled up from the ground with a pale complexion. At this instant, there no longer was any arrogance on his face as before. He widened his eyes at the young man in white in disbelief as astonishment filled his eyes. Didn't the aura that suddenly erupted belong to a half-step Yin Yang perfected lord? Chu Yi would never have dreamed that this refined and pretty young man would actually be a half-step Yin Yang perfected lord. Senior, senior brother Chu, she, she is a half-step Yin Yang perfected lord. That youth was completely flustered. They originally thought that their target was an ordinary young man, but unexpectedly, she was actually a domineering half-step Yin Yang perfected lord. Given their cultivation levels, how could they contend against such a powerful figure? Run. All color had long been drained from Chu Yi's face. He never thought that the person he belittled would actually be a half-step Yin Yang perfected lord. If he knew that from the start, he would not have dared to offend her no matter how bold he was. However, it was already too late for them to escape now. Yi Kington was not one who would let these two off easily. She lifted her legs slightly and shuttled to the front of those two people. She raised her hand and slapped the back of those two youths' head. Blood spattered out instantly all over Chu Yi's face. Chu Yi felt as if he was soaked in ice water, and his whole body shuddered, looking at his junior brother's dead body right before him. Chu Yi's legs wobbled, and he fell on the icy ground with a thud. You, you cannot kill me, my, my master is a Dangang sect elder. If you kill me, my master and Dangang sect will not take it lying down. Yi Kington looked at Chu Yi coldly without a trace of warmth in her eyes. Let him go. If she let him go him, that was when Dangang sect would not let her off. Wasn't it? Yi Kington did not wish to say any more things to Chu Yi. She took a few steps forward to Chu Yi with Oru already condensed in her hands. After seeing Yi Kington's murderous intent, Chu Yi gasped and tore a talisman that he had been holding in his hands previously. A ball of light suddenly shone. Yi Kington squinted her eyes and faintly saw Chu Yi attempting to flee when the light ray appeared. A murderous intent emerged in her eyes and she leapt towards Chu Yi. Chu Yi fled at top speed, not daring to remain any longer. A silver shadow suddenly flashed by in front of Chu Yi, who felt an excruciating pain in his throat before crashing on the ground before he was able to see what that silver shadow was. Yi Kington, who chased over, 
was surprised to find Chu Yi on the ground and paused in her tracks. When she saw the silver shadow that suddenly appeared, delight filled her heart. Xiao Guai? Yi King Tung widened her eyes as she looked at the silver wolf who stood in front of Chu Yi majestically. The silver wolf that disappeared for a long time suddenly appeared before Yi King Tung in a domineering and impressive manner as when it left. A bright trace of blood could be faintly seen on the silver wolf's front paws. Chapter 714 The Silver Wolf Chu Yi's neck was cut by the silver wolf, and he collapsed on the ground. The silver wolf's sharp claws tore his neck apart and a large amount of blood was spurting out of the wounds, dyeing the ground below him red. Within a few seconds, he was out of breath. Yi King Tung did not care about Chu Yi's life right now. She stared surprisingly at her regained treasure. Xiao Guai, how come you are here? Yi King Tung took a step forward and went in front of the silver wolf. She sized up the familiar figure, and her eyes were filled with joy. The silver wolf stood in front of Yi Kington calmly. Its eyes scanned through Yi Kington and then landed on the little white tiger behind her. It just took a glance without any further reaction. Yi Kington did not expect that she would meet the silver wolf here. Based on the silver wolf's reaction, it recognized her as well. Yi Kington did not bother about that. Beasts recognized people by their aura and not their faces. Even if her appearance changed entirely, as long as her aura remained, the silver wolf would be able to recognize her. Where have you been? I have been looking for you all the time. The coldness on her she had previously all disappeared now. She stared at and gently touched the silver wolf's fur as how she did in the past. She squinted her eyes in satisfaction as the fur slid through her fingers. The silver wolf just stood there and allowed Yi Kington's close contact with it. The little white tiger narrowed its eyes as Yi Kington touched the silver wolf. It stared closely at the silver wolf and was suddenly shocked. What the hell? How could it be this guy? The same time the little white tiger figured out something. The silver wolf's eyes met with its eyes. The little white tiger trembled as it could sense the warning from the silver wolf's eyes. The little white tiger felt complexed as it stared at the close interaction between the silver wolf and Yi Kington. She doesn't feel weird at all. While Yi Kington was immersed in the joy of the silver wolf's return, she did not notice that there was a man dressed in Tangang sect's clothes standing in the woods a hundred meters away. He stared at the corpses of his senior brothers in terror. He received Chu Yi's call earlier, but he was busy with something else and arrived slightly later. However, when he reached the place, he witnessed how Chu Yi was killed by the silver wolf. The Tangang sect disciple was afraid that he would be exposed. He remembered Yi Kington's appearance and left. Xiao Guai, are you here to look for me? Yi Kington stared at the silver wolf closely, but she was still very curious. She thought that it was just a wolf with special fur, but the silver wolf always went missing. The last time the silver wolf appeared was at the Xuanling sect in the formidable Heavens dynasty. How did it find her when she was at the Nine Knights dynasty? The silver wolf did not have any reaction, and its eyes glanced at the ring on Yi Kington's finger. Little White, you are the fiend celestial beast. Do you know beast language? Yi Kington suddenly had a thought and looked towards the little white tiger behind her. The little white tiger looked at Yi Kington then the silver wolf and said, Fu Q. I'm not a wolf. How will I know what it's talking about? She can neglect those details, but don't drag me alone. Chapter 715 The Silver Wolf, 2 In the first place, Yi Kington did not expect the little white tiger to cooperate. She stopped asking and hugged the indifferent silver wolf tightly. She smiled and touched its smooth fur. The little white tiger was left aside by Yi Kington. Her eyes were totally fixed on her regained silver wolf. After a short while, the little white tiger took a glimpse at the silver wolf. A cold glint flashed across its eyes. The silver wolf was more serious as it saw the little white tiger's cold sight. Come here, let me introduce you guys to each other. Yi Kington held the little white tiger's front paw and pulled it in front of the silver wolf. This is my first spirit pet but it was lost previously. Be kind to each other in the future, Yi Kington said seriously. Be kind? I'm not interested. The little white tiger glanced at the silver wolf. Under the silver wolf's threatening sight, 
The little white tiger totally ignored the situation and yawned. What spirit pet? I think you should stay away from it. It has an anti-wife look. Nothing good will happen to you when you bring it alone. Both the silver wolf and Yi Kington were stunned as the little white tiger finished its words. Anti-wife. Yi Kington frowned. Anti-owner. The little white tiger contemplated for a while and changed its words. Yi Kington stared blankly at the little white tiger. Look at its lustful face. The little white tiger sat in front of Yi Kington and stared at the silver wolf directly. The silver wolf stared back at the little white tiger, and cold glints flickered in its eyes. How could you see that? I thought that you didn't understand wolves. Yi Kington was curious. Fu Q, I'm not a wolf, but I'm a beast. All wolves are lustful. I think you should chase it away. Is it not enough to have me alone? The little white tiger said, Are you jealous? Yi Kington smiled and stared at the little white tiger with interest. Your choice. The little white tiger shook its head. There's no time to talk anymore. Yi Kington did not bother to talk to the little white tiger. Golden flames emerged from her palm and burned Chuyi's and another Tangang sect disciples' bodies. She then brought the little white tiger and the silver wolf towards the falling sky valley. She was outside a huge mountain valley after half a day. The mountain valley was surrounded by stretches of mountains. Each peak was a sub-valley of the Falling Sky Valley. The rules of recruiting disciples in the Falling Sky Valley were very strict. Normal people might not be able to climb onto any peak, not to mention cultivating in the Falling Sky Valley. The two of you wait for me here. Don't move around. I'll be back soon. Yi Kington looked at the little white tiger and the silver wolf and said seriously. Yi Kington was afraid that once she left, her Xiaowai would disappear again. It was not very appropriate to bring two spirit pets along on the first visit to the Falling Sky Valley. It would need the Falling Sky Valley's approval. Even those renowned Tamas had to leave their spirit animals outside. After Yi Kington left, the silver wolf's cold and ghostly eyes landed on the little white tiger. He he. Do you know what the most painful thing in this world is? The little white tiger yawned and smiled at the silver wolf. The silver wolf was expressionless and did not seem to be interested enough to reply. The little white tiger smiled again and said, The most painful thing is knowing the truth before others, and no one understands. The more you know, the cleverer you are than the rest, and the lonelier you will be. Am I correct, demon god of the earth? Chapter 716, The Silver Wolf, 3. After hearing the little white tiger's words, cold glints flashed in the silver wolf's eyes. Its intense aura seemed to be able to enclose the entire world. Everything would tremble in fear under the aura. However, the little white tiger was calm and did not seem to be affected at all. You are the demon god, the supreme one in the demons. However, you evolved from demonic beasts, as a fiend celestial beasts, we are the paragon in the demonic beasts. My father was the emperor of the fiend celestial beast. There were four paragon fiend celestial beast, primordial divine dragon, savage rose finch, nine heaven tortoise, and the celestial white tiger. My father, as the celestial white tiger, had conquered the celestial world with the ancient emperor and the saint. I was born in the celestial world and came into the human world incidentally, my bloodline is purer. I'm the paragon fiend celestial beast which surpasses the bloodline of a normal celestial white tiger. Your threatening does not work on me. The little white tiger stared at the silver wolf and said, However, you are the most outstanding demon god in the human world when compared to the previous demon gods. As a demon god, if you want to leave the human world and enter the celestial world, you need to go through 81 calamities. I think the most you have gone through is around 70 calamities. However, before the little white tiger could finish its words, the silver wolf smashed the little white tiger with its paw. The little white tiger shouted angrily, Fu Q, how dare you to bully me just because I'm in my infant form. Good, you'll wait for my revenge. The little white tiger shook its butt and turned to walk backward, keeping a distance away from the silver wolf. The silver wolf took a cold glance at the little white tiger and did not move anymore. Yi Kington returned after a while. It beat me just now. The little white tiger jumped into Yi Kington's arms immediately. It stared at Yi Kington with its round eyes that were full of grievance. It beat you? Yi Kington was stunned as she saw how pathetic the little white tiger appeared. She looked towards the silver wolf instinctively. However, 
The silver wolf was indifferent. Why did it beat you? Yi Kington asked. Don't you know that tigers do not go well with wolves? That's for water and fire. Yi Kington shook her head. I don't care. It slapped me with its paw. I need to take my revenge. The little white tiger gnashed its teeth. Go ahead. Yi Kington looked at the tiny white tiger and then the imposing silver wolf. She then wanted to let go of the little white tiger. Well, I'm a tiger. Why should I be bothered by a wolf? The little white tiger suddenly shook its head and said rightfully, it could not beat the silver wolf. The little white tiger was still at its infant form. All energy in its body was used up. Any cultivator would be able to beat it. A fiend celestial beast at its infant form was almost useless. Let's go. Yi Kington hugged the little white tiger and waved towards the silver wolf. The silver wolf stood up and shook its fur. It followed Yi Kington slowly and walked towards the falling sky valley. Yi Kington entered the falling sky valley previously and explained her intention, hoping that she could enter the falling sky valley for cultivation. There would be a specialized warden that would be in charge of Yi Kington's assessment. They allowed the spirit animals to follow. Yi Kington arrived outside the falling sky valley together with the little white tiger and the silver wolf after a short while. There was a huge mountain valley in front of them. Many disciples were patrolling outside the mountain valley. You're here, brother Yi. The disciple at the front smiled as he saw Yi Kington previously. When Yi Kington reached this place, she offered many things to these patrolling disciples in order to enter the Falling Sky Valley. She also asked them to introduce a warden for her. Chapter 717, Falling Sky Valley, 1. Warden Xun will be here shortly. Please wait for a while. The disciple smiled and said, Warden Xun, is his name Xun Feng? Yi Kington suddenly asked, yes, Yi Kington had spent quite a long time at the Falling Sky Valley in her previous life, Xun Feng, Warden Xun, was someone she knew, Yi Kington smiled secretly, things would be much easier if the man was Xun Feng, within a short while, a tall middle-aged man with a full beard came over. The patrolling disciples stepped forward when they saw him. They introduced Yi Kington and then continued with their patrolling duties. Xun Feng stared at the pretty young man in front of him. His eyes were filled with patience, and he said, Why do you come to the Falling Sky Valley? I am Yi Chen, and I want to enter the Falling Sky Valley as a disciple. Yi Kington said directly. When she just finished her words. Xun Feng's face was extremely impatient. He sized up the young man in front of him and waved his hand. There's still half a month's time to the assessment time for new disciples who wish to enter the Falling Sky Valley. Why do you come so early? Go back and wait. Come here after half a month. Xun Feng then intended to leave as he felt irritated. He was still thinking about why the disciples asked him to come out. But he did not expect that it was for this young man who wished to enter the Falling Sky Valley. A smile flashed across Yi Kington's eyes as she saw Xun Feng about to leave. She immediately took out a bottle of elixirs from her space ring and stepped forward. Please wait, Warden Xun. Did I not tell you to come back in half a month? What do you still want? Xun Feng turned his head impatiently. But he suddenly saw Yi Kington handing over a bottle of elixirs to him. Xun Feng's eyes flickered. He stopped and stared at Yi Kington with hesitation. This is. Yi Kington smiled and passed the elixirs to Xun Feng. Warden Xun, this is the Liaoyun pill. It's very expressive to strengthen your body and your strength. Please accept it. La Yun pill. Xun Feng's eyes brightened. He focused on the physique in cultivation and required elixirs. He had heard of the Liaoyun pill before. It was very rare, and normal elixir workshops were not able to refine it. There was supply from a few super sects only. It could be considered a rare and priceless item. Xun Feng did not believe Yi Kington's words instantly. He opened the bottle and sniffed as the fragrance entered his nose. His eyes were brighter. It's really the Liaoyun pill. Xun Feng held the elixirs in his hand. As he raised his eyes and looked towards Yi Qingtong again, the impatience disappeared and was replaced by a smile. Yi Chen, right? How can I accept such things? Though that was what he said, Xun Feng had kept the Liaoyun pill in his pockets as he spoke. Yi Qingtong's eyes were filled with a smile as she saw Xun Feng's move. The easiest person who could be bribed in the Falling Sky Valley would be Warden Xun. Though he was tall and strong, he was keen on gaining petty advantages. Yi Chen, 
I can feel your determination to enter the falling sky valley, since the mountains here are hard to climb and there's only half a month left till the assessment, I shall arrange a place for you to stay outside the valley, you'll stay there for half a month and join the rest of the candidates after half a month. Xiang Feng's tone was much gentler, chapter 718, falling sky valley. 2. Wait for half a month, Yi Qingtong did not have time to waste here. Furthermore, the Falling Sky Valley's assessment was very complex. There would be more trouble if she had to go through the assessment. Yi Qingtong said immediately, I'm very determined today. May I know whether I can enter first? Xun Feng frowned slightly. However, before he could say anything, Yi Qingtong suddenly took out a pair of boxing gloves. The gloves were made of unknown material but it was shining under the light, making it extremely eye-catching. Xun Feng opened his eyes wide as he saw the gloves. Scorching sun gloves? Xun Feng recognized the gloves instantly. The scorching sun gloves were made of pure gold, an extremely rare material. Even the falling sky valley might only have a few weapons made of that. The scorching sun gloves would take half a year for forging masters. The price one had to pay a blacksmith would be unimaginable not mentioning the price of the pure gold. Xun Feng had seen one of the Tangang sect elders wearing the scorching sun gloves before. His fist was able to break mountains and overturn rivers. The power was insane. He longed for that all the time. However, the scorching sun gloves were priceless. Even if he had the money, he would not be able to find one. Furthermore he did not have that amount of money. Xun Feng's sight was immediately fixed on that pair of scorching sun gloves. Xun Feng's reaction was totally captured by Yi Qingtong. A smile flashed across her eyes, and she handed the gloves over to Xun Feng. I have heard that your eight direction fist techniques are outstanding. As people say, heroes must be paired with the best swords. I think this pair of scorching sun gloves match with your fist techniques well. Yi Qingtong smiled and said. Xun Feng held the pair of scorching sun gloves, and his heartbeat accelerated. He thought that the Liaoyun pill that Yi Chen gave him was precious enough, however he even had the scorching sun gloves for him. This, this is inappropriate. Xun Feng held the scorching sun gloves tightly, but he was still being polite on his words. The scorching sun gloves are only suitable for a strong person like you, if they fall into normal people's hands their potential will not be expressed as well. Yi Qingtong threw out a lot of pretty words that made Xun Feng feel contended. The La Ayuan pill and the scorching sun gloves were precious, but Yi Qingtong did not feel pity for them at all. She acquired these things from the disciples' corpses in the hell of a vice in Ruka. Besides these two, she still had many precious things from all the sects in her space ring. Yi Qingtong really gained a lot from the hell of a vice in Ruka. People would be surprised by any few that Yi Qingtong took out, then I'll accept them. Xun Feng smiled and said. He kept the scorching sun gloves, and his sight was getting gentler. Young brother, I see that you are in a rush. I will help you to ask the elders in the valley. If you have the ability, it should not be a problem for you to enter early. Xun Feng was easily convinced after receiving such heavy presents. Furthermore he guessed that Yi Chen came from some renowned family clan. If not, he would not be able to offer such treasures like the Liraiyun pill and the scorching sun gloves. Chapter 719, Falling Sky Valley, 3. Since he was a disciple from a big family clan, his foundation should be pretty good. Yi Qingtong looked at Xun Feng's blissful expression, and her smile deepened. Indeed. Xun Feng's character was exactly the same as in her previous life. As long as he was fed fully, it was much more convenient for him to do things. Yi Qingtong immediately said, Thank you, Warden Xun. May I trouble you to refer me to the Valley Master please? What? Xun Feng was excited over the two treasures at hand but could not help but be shaken when he heard Yi Qingtong. You want to meet the Valley Master? Why? Yi Qingtong said, Truth to be told. I've long heard about the current acting Valley Master of Falling Sky Valley, Perfected Xuanjin, and have looked up to him for a long time. If I can become Perfected Xuanjin's disciple, it will be my honor. This time, Xun Feng could not smile anymore. Little brother, this is a little hard already. Our Valley Master has not accepted a disciple for many years. Even if you look up to him, I'm afraid it will be difficult for you to get what you want. Xun Feng originally thought that Yi Qingtong merely wanted to enter Falling Sky Valley as soon as possible, thus, 
he agreed to her request. Given E. Kington's situation, there should not be any problem in gaining an elder's approval and be permitted to enter the valley. Yet, unexpectedly, the person she wanted as her master was actually their acting valley master, perfected Xuanjin. Ever since their old valley master was heavily injured and was recuperating, perfected Xuanjin became their acting valley master and his position in Falling Sky Valley was naturally different from before. Moreover, he had not accepted a disciple for many years, and many geniuses who wanted to become perfected Xuanzhen's disciple were all rejected. Little brother, it's best if you don't think about that. It's alright as long as you enter Falling Sky Valley, but as for our valley master you can forget about it. Xun Feng accepted many things from Yi Qingtun and could only persuade her instead of being too tough. However, Yi Kington had made up her mind long ago. The purpose of coming to Falling Sky Valley was to become a disciple under perfected Xuanzhen. She did not say anything and retrieved an armor from her space ring straightforwardly. Once that armor was taken out, Xun Feng was giddy by the sight. It was a dark green armor with golden fine lines all over the armor which sparkled under the sunlight, extremely eye catching. Xun Feng could not notice anything else at that moment as he was in a daze by the shining armor. Golden Moon. Armor Xun Feng naturally heard of the name of this armor before. If the scorching sun gloves was a valuable treasure, this golden moon armor could only be described as rare. Do you like this golden moon armor, Warden Xun? Yi Qingtong said with a smile as she watched Xun Feng's reaction in satisfaction. Yes, of course I like it. Xun Feng nodded repeatedly and was only short of gluing his eyes on that armor. If you can refer me to the Valley Master, regardless of whether the Valley Master is willing to accept me as a disciple, this golden moon armor can be considered as a fee for your hard work, Yi Qingtong said generously. Xun Feng was about to tear up from the agitation. He had only seen this golden moon armor in paintings and had never thought that he could lay his hands on it. It was only possible for such a treasure to be possessed by someone at an elder level, and a warden like him did not even have to think about it. What exactly is this fellow's background? First the Liyun pill, then the scorching sun gloves. And now, even the golden moon armor is out? Could she be Uyang family clan master's illegitimate child? Chapter 720, Apprenticeship, 1. Yi Kington was not an illegitimate child of the Uyang family clan. This golden moon armor was merely found from a super sect elder's space ring when she was in the hell of a Vicenirica mystic realm. Although this item was good, it was too large for Yi Kington, and there was no way she could wear it given her size. Furthermore, given Yin Yang perfected lord's current half-step Yin Yang perfected lord state, this item was not a must either. She was just offering a present provided by others to achieve her goal, and this was the true value of the golden moon armor. Xun Feng hesitated. He indeed wanted this golden moon armor very much, and what Yi Qingtong said earlier caused his heart to waver. This, there's no issue with helping to refer you. But you also know that our valley master has not accepted any disciple for a long time. If you want to become his disciple, I reckon that it's not so simple. I've already said that regardless of whether it is successful, this golden moon armor is yours, Yi Qingtong said readily. Xun Feng clenched his fists secretly. Yi Qingtong had already put it that way. If he refused, wasn't he a fool? All right, I'll help you to refer him then. As for whether the Valley Master is willing to accept you or not, it will be up to you. Xun Feng finally succumbed to the temptation of the Golden Moon Armor. Furthermore, this fellow had already said that it was dependent on his skills whether he could make it or not, and he only needed to refer him, which was nothing much. This fellow has so many treasures and he must be from a pretty powerful background. If the Valley Master sees her, there should not be any issues either. I'll have to trouble you then, Warden Xun. Yi Qingtong bowed with a smile as a glint flashed across her eyes. This was the outcome she wanted. All right, you'll follow me into the Valley now. I'll bring you to meet our Valley Master. Warden Xun kept the scorching sun gloves and the golden moon armor in his space ring cautiously as an indescribable satisfaction filled him. If the valley's disciples were all like this little brother Yi Chen in giving away things so extravagantly, 
wouldn't his life be extremely sweet? Yi Kington brought the little white tiger and the silver wolf into Falling Sky Valley. The scenery before her made her recall the various incidents in her past life. Images of her cultivating with her senior brothers and sisters in Falling Sky Valley popped up in her mind continuously, and the figure of her master lingered in the deepest corner of her memory. Very quickly, Sun Feng led Yi Kington to a hall. Sun Feng paused outside the hall and turned to look at Yi Kington, Valley Master is inside. I'll enter the hall and speak to him. Wait outside here. All right. Yi Kington nodded. Looking at the hall in front of her, she could not help but recall images of her listening to her master's teaching inside the hall. After giving the orders, Sun Feng walked straight into the hall. A silver-haired senior was seated in the central seat of the hall. Although that senior's hair was all white, his features did not seem aged at all. He stroked his long beard gently as his deep-set eyes were focused on a scroll on the table. A handsome youth stood beside the senior. When Sun Feng saw that senior, he immediately bowed and greeted. I pay my respects. Valley Master, I have something to report. Perfected Xuanjun looked up slightly and was not in a hurry to speak when he saw Xun Feng, who entered suddenly. Indifferently, he handed the scroll on the table to the youth beside him. Yan Xiu, send this scroll to your eldest senior brother later. Yes. The youth nodded slightly, received the scroll, and stood aside. Then, Perfected Xuanjun turned to look at Xun Feng. What is it? 